Welcome to episode 696 of the Two Minute Takeaway Podcast. Hi, I'm motivational keynote speaker Ken Ockel. Today we are talking about smartphone use in meetings. These devices, they've been around for a while, they're here to stay. How are you handling them, their use in meetings? Some wonder do these phones hurt our performance in these meetings? Meetings are where big decisions need to be made, or important information is shared. Are the phones nothing more than distraction roulette at a time when focus is needed? Smartphones have been a part of our world for more than 15 years. Hard to believe that, but it's true. Yet many have never considered how they should be handled at work. Recently, I polled my LinkedIn followers on smartphone use in meetings, and here are the results. Put it down, 36%. Use sparingly and quietly, 34%. Work-related only, 22%. Okay to check, it's a tool, 8%. Why don't we look a little closer at each choice and help you determine which might be the best approach for your team. First off, put it down. These people want your focus on the meeting and nothing else. They want you mentally present and not distracted. This may be a challenge, as many are conditioned to constantly check their phones out of a fear of missing out on something. It's become second nature. To get buy-in, you need to remind people that in almost all cases, the world will not end if they take a break from their phones. A strict smartphone use in meetings policy may also lead to more conversations among attendees. For instance, before the meeting, instead of checking their devices, they'll have a chance to talk to one another. Next, use sparingly and quietly. I would call this the we're all adults option. In some cases, people may need to stay connected to their phones to do their jobs. Fast answers may be required for questions from outside the room, but they are expected not to make whatever is happening on their device a distraction or problem for other attendees. Any use is done very quietly. And it's important to remember, when you check your phone, you don't become invisible. People will notice. Let's talk about work-related only. For some, smartphone use blurs the line between work and home life. Family members may share important updates during the 8 to 5 time frame. Or you take a moment to buy something that is unexpectedly on sale. In a world where many feel they are plugged into work all the time, you can understand why some have no problem with addressing personal issues during office hours. After all, they may be expected to respond to work issues while they are at home. But in meetings, many leaders do not want any outside distractions. It's okay if you use your phone, but only if it's business-related. Finally, it's okay to check it's a tool In this scenario, smartphone use is seen as inevitable. From pulling up an email to looking up statistics, our devices can provide a lot of instant information. This policy assumes people will use their phones in a productive manner or will not let outside interruptions become a distraction. It is possible that at a certain point of a meeting, just about everyone could be on their smartphones. That's not ideal for productivity. But there is also an acceptance that our devices are too commonplace for any kind of restrictions. I've got some cool people for you to meet. Katie the Custodian, Gina the Ballerina, and 20 Push-Ups Pat. These are just some of the characters who are in my new book, Get Better, Smart Business Advice from Unexpected Mentors. The book is out You can pick it up at Amazon.com. To find out more about the -the behind-the-scenes story of the book, go to my website, KenOakle.com. 
And while there, you can also watch some clips from my speaking presentations and listen to past episodes of this podcast. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Ken Ogle. Get better and take care. 